All right, guys. I hope you are all doing well today. Um, thank you for tuning in again. If you like this, be sure to subscribe, give me a good rating, share it with your friends. Let's get it right into it. I don't want to waste any time. So I don't know about you guys, but something that I personally struggle with a lot is the idea that God isn't looking for you to understand his will necessarily. He's looking for you to obey it. And as I work on building my relationship with Christ and walking in his ways, I get frustrated a lot by not being able to see the big picture. And I'm the type of person who likes to always have things planned out, and I like to know what direction I'm moving in. For some reason, it's really difficult for me to let go of my desire to have things figured out before I get started. I know that I'm supposed to trust God and that his plan is greater than my limited understanding, but it's still sometimes really difficult to let go of the illusion of certainty and to just start walking that path. But rarely, if ever, does God tell you exactly what's going to happen. Typically, we'll get one step at a time, and it's up to us whether or not we listen. Sometimes those commands are explicit, and sometimes they're a little bit more subtle. We'll talk about both of those. But it's, it's normal to want the direction to be clear and to come with reassurance, but that's not really how God works. This can be frustrating, but I'm learning that it's actually a really good thing. We often think that we're smarter than we are and that we're more capable than we really are. Our brains are designed to give meaning to the world, and because of that, it's really easy to feel as though what we believe is true. The reality, however, is that our perceptions and our judgments are extremely, extremely limited. And as smart as we may think we are, we just don't have the big picture stuff down. And to make things worse, we're, we're usually unaware of the blind spots, um, and those things become stumbling blocks for us. So learning to trust God and to let go of our need to know what comes after the next step, it forces us to begin letting go of our preconceived notions of life. It forces us to stop believing that we have all the answers and to release our judgments about what is best in our own wisdom. So Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. When we pray, we need to learn to let go of that request and to truly believe, um, tr truly leave the outcome up to God. That doesn't mean that we stop desiring that thing, but it does mean that we need to let go of um, our, our need to control the outcome. And I'll give you a good example of how this has played out in my life recently. I asked for financial stability and for a good income. And my prayer was answered, but not in the way that I expected it to be. I was working in a different industry at the time, and I wanted to be successful in that. But God's plan was a little bit different. And to make a really long story short, I had to be willing to give up that particular career. And it wasn't that he, it just, it wasn't what he wanted me to be doing. So really, when I asked for fi financial peace, it was answered, but I had to be willing to let go of how I thought it should happen. I was led to a different route, and I thought, oh, well, this is it. Now I'm supposed to work in this place instead. But again, that also wasn't what he wanted. The opening at that location fell through. So they sent me to a different town, actually, instead of a different office. And by the way, this was a town I really did not want to work in. But once I got there, things fell into place almost immediately. And it ended up being a higher paying position um, with a lot more opportunity. And then more importantly, that office just so happens to have a lot of people that are involved in ministry in a way that I can already see is going to be an important part of my journey at some point. Now, of course, I still need to remind myself that I don't know how yet and to let God work that stuff out. The point of this, though, is that if I had insisted on doing things my way, it wouldn't have worked out as well. And God wanted me in that particular place for reasons that I still don't understand, but I have to trust that he has a much better angle on this than I do. 1 Samuel uh, 15, 22 says, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much, in as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. In that passage, the message is being given to Saul after he disobeyed the Lord's command. God gave him a task, but Saul didn't quite listen. He didn't go completely in the opposite direction, but he still ignored the commandments and tried to do things in his own way, in his own strength, and in his own wisdom. And God told him what was going to happen, but to wait on his timing. Saul instead did things in his own timing and rushed forward out of fear. 
And it wasn't until I reread this story pretty recently that I realized just how true that is to my own life. I'll pray for things, but then I go off and try to get them done myself instead of listening to what God wants me to do. I'll see an opportunity that looks appealing and I'll jump on it without first praying and waiting for an answer. I think that the waiting part in particular uh, for me is extremely difficult. I hate sitting around when I know that there's work to be done. The problem is that when I insist on being busy, I often forget to stop and listen. And this causes me to veer off course pretty easily. And I end up making unwise decisions. I'm sure you guys can probably relate to that. Um, remember that the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. So when we become fixated on ourselves and on the world over God, folly and bad decisions are just inevitable. It's just going to happen. Learning to be patient and to wait on the Lord. Learning to rest in the faith that he is always in control and always looking out for us is what will ultimately lead us to the fulfillment of our true purpose. When I was going through those financial struggles, I remember having a really profound moment where I was just extremely stressed and I was praying that God would not let me go under. And at some point, I stopped praying for things to work out a certain way and instead asked for him to cure my unbelief and to help me to trust him no matter what happened. And that moment was when my emotions all, all of a sudden started to clear away and I had a sense of calm and a sense of peace. It just seemed so obvious to me all at once that, of course, it was going to be okay. When I stopped asking for things to go my way and instead, and instead asked that I trust, that's when he answered me. And I could just feel the reassurance all at once. The knowing that I was not alone, that he had not led me that far just to let me drown. That he does care and that he has everything under control. And by the way, that same week is when my original prayer was answered as well. Again, not in the way that I thought it would but just in a better way john 14 15 says if you love me keep my commands and i'm seeing this verse a little bit differently in light of everything that's happened to me recently obviously that means that we need to follow the instructions that god has given us but now i'm realizing that it also means that if we want to be led by god that we have to do what we're told even when those instructions don't make sense for example Right now, there's certain things that I really want out of life, but God is telling me that I need to wait, and I don't understand why, and I don't necessarily like it, but I do know that there's, there's other opportunities that he has placed in front of me, and I need to act upon those, even though it's not necessarily what I want right now. That's what God is telling me to do. Some of those things are specific to me, and some of those things are generic struggles with you know sin. Um, Sometimes those challenge, challenges are more along the lines of being able to hear his voice in the first place. So here's something I've learned lately about listening to God, though. We like to ask for the big things, like what career should I choose? Where do I find the person that I'm supposed to marry? How can I get this, that, or the other? Where can I move? When can I move to my dream home? Um, stuff like that. But sometimes it doesn't feel like we get the answers on those big things. Remember when Christ said that, he who is trusted with little will be trusted with much. If you find yourself not getting the answers that you're looking for, one, try adjusting your prayers to make sure that they're in alignment with God's will. Help me to listen. Help me to obey over help me to get this thing. Make your will known over, please Lord, bring this to me. And then also start, to put, start looking to put yourself in alignment with spirit by paying attention to the commands and the guidance that you've already gotten but might be ignoring. So last year, I was struggling with some pretty major questions, and I didn't feel like I was getting any answers. And at the time, I was frustrated, and I felt that my prayers were just being ignored. But in hindsight, I can see that I wasn't even listening. I wanted things to be a certain way, and that's a common problem. God always gives us free will. We always have a choice. He's got everything worked out, and he always knows the best route to take and always has bigger plans for us, but he's not going to force us to do anything. If we don't listen, he's not going to make us. So when we cling to how we think that life should be and our way of doing things, what we're really doing is refusing to obey. And since we have the right to do that, what's happening is we're not giving God space to work. We're not going to be forced into doing things, so we're essentially limiting ourselves to our own power and to our own understanding. We have to learn to let go of that need and instead open up to the infinite possibility in the wisdom of our creator who holds every molecule and every solar system together in perfect harmony. If we don't feel 
that we're getting the direction that we're looking for. Maybe it's because we're not letting him work in the way that he wants to work. Maybe we've also been given small tasks of faith and obedience, but we still haven't acted on those. Maybe we're looking for a sign towards the big picture stuff, the, in, in the, the, you know, the obscure things that are different for everyone, but we're not following the commandments that were written out for each of us. So like we want the big stuff, we want to know what job to take, but we're ignoring the fact, like, we're living in sin, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it. So we're, we're dating somebody we know we should. We're working in an immoral um, industry that we know we shouldn't be in. We, we're not treating others the way that we know we're supposed to. And it's like, well, I want these big answers to these big questions. And it's like, but you're not doing the little things right. And it's not about being perfect because we're never going to be perfect. But if we're not even trying, if we're, if we're willfully ignoring, like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. But also, I do want you to do this big thing for me. It's like, start with the small stuff if that's where you're at. And I know that I can think of several times where, when I was asking for something, but while asking was also ignoring these basic commandments, you know, stuff like not lying, not being jealous, acting towards others with love and, you know, so on. Not being faithful in those little things can weigh us down because they're not actually little at all. Those things that we do on a daily basis really define our integrity and they shape our character in profound ways that we're usually completely unaware of. The goal is not to have life happen a certain way, but rather to walk in faith and to grow closer to God each and every day. Seek first the kingdom and all the other stuff will also be given to you. Put Christ at the center of your life and just trust that he'll work everything else out. He will. 1 John 5.3 says, in fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. Walking this path is difficult, there's no doubt about it. The good news, though, is that there's a, there's a great reward for it, one, but two, we don't have to do it alone. God will pretty much carry whatever we allow him to carry. The only stress and anxiety that we have to shoulder is in direct proportion to how much we take our eyes off of him. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy but within the difficulty, we are supported and we are protected in supernatural ways far beyond our comprehension. You know, Peter might have gotten wet when he got out of the boat. He might have been a little bit uncomfortable, but he was already wet and cold from the storm to begin with. Staying in the boat because it seems safer and clinging to illusion of comfort and safety while the only one who can save you is insisting that you jump overboard is silly, but we all do it. Peter also sank in proportion to how much fear overtook him his mind, how much he took his eyes off of Christ. Likewise, the more that we focus on the uncertainty and the fear that assaults us every day, the more we create separation between ourselves and divinity. Fortunately, though, God is faithful, even when we're not. He's always ready to reach down and to pull us back up when we fall. He's always able to turn things around, even when we've gone off the beaten path, and to lead us back to our destination in unexpected ways. Philippians 4.7 says, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Seek to walk in his ways, and that peace will be yours. How do we do that? Well, by obeying his commands. And sometimes those are the common commands that are written in Scripture, the things that, like the rules, the stuff that we all know, stuff that applies to everybody all the time. And sometimes those commands are, are delivered to you personally. If you feel like you haven't gotten an answer lately, try thinking back to the last time that you were given direction. Did you act on it? Did you listen to it? Did you do that thing? If not, well, then go do it. We're taking this one step at a time, and we don't need to worry that the lamp that we're holding only illuminates a small area around our feet. God is the ruler of the unseen just as much as he is of the seen, and we don't need to know every detail because he does. He's got it under control. We can't get our head around everything. We don't need to see the big picture as much as we want to, and I'm speaking from, like, this is, like, definitely my struggles. Like, I want to know what the next step is. I want to know everything mapped out. I want to know exactly where I'm going. And it's like, no, like you've got to sit still. You've got to just trust. You have to have faith. And we see a great example of this in the story of Moses. When Moses is told to go speak to Pharaoh, his response is, but what if I, what do I do if he doesn't believe me? You know, first of all, remember something about this. It's easy to get frustrated and say, well, why doesn't God just speak to me directly uh, like he did to Moses in the burning bush. Why doesn't he speak to me, you know, from the clouds in a loud voice so that I know for sure? But the Bible is full of people speaking directly with God or with angels and still doubting. So the communication style isn't the issue. But anyway, 
God gives Moses an answer. He says, you know, throw your staff to the ground and it'll turn into a snake. And Moses says, well, what if that doesn't work? What if he still says no? So God gives him another miracle to work. You know, the, the, the thing with the hand and the, you know, turning it leprous, whatever. And Moses is still anxious about this. So God tells me, you know what? You don't, you don't even have to be the one to talk. I'll send, I'll send Aaron to talk for you. Just go. Just be there. Just be present. I don't, I don't care. You can have someone else do the work for you. Just do it, okay? And again, this recently was revealed to me in a new way because I realized that I'm guilty of the exact same thing. I want to know all the details, and I want to be assured that things are going to work out before I start. But in clinging to that desire for certainty, I sometimes fail to act in faith. Moses wanted to be sure that Pharaoh would be convinced. The whole, story, the whole point of the story was that Pharaoh wouldn't be convinced. So how are we also guilty of that in our own lives? Trying to make things happen a certain way, trying to say, okay, well, I, I want to make sure that I know how things are going to happen. And God's like, that's not the point. The point is something much greater than that. You're, just, you're not ready for it. How often do we try to get God to make things to work out the way that we think they should go when God is really trying to work things out at a much higher level? God didn't ask Moses to help him strategize and to help him figure out what, what what's the what do you Moses what do you think is the best route to take what do you think is the best plan? He's probably also not asking for us for our input either. If we're being honest with ourselves, he wants our obedience. We have free will, but but our will is of the world. His will is of a higher nature. So if we want to see the power of heaven manifested in our lives, we have to be willing to turn the reins over to him and to give up control. It may be comforting to cling to the reins and to think that we have some control if we do that. But the fact is that we're moving blindly through life. And our, our vision is so much smaller than God's. The only truly safe way to play it is to willingly turn things over to the one who has created this world, conquered the flesh, defeated the enemy, and overcome anything and everything that could possibly destroy us. That is the God that we serve. And that is the promise that we have. And that is the path that we get to walk. When we answer the call, we get to experience untold adventures, knowing that we're safe. So best of luck to you guys. Again, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Go in peace.